Let's start off. Deputy Chief Justice Kalpana Rawal and Supreme Court Judge Justice Philip Tunoi have lost a last-ditch attempt to block their exit from the judiciary. This is after the Supreme Court declined to reinstate a stay order initially issued by Justice Njoki Ndungu for 21 days, saying there was no bench to handle the matter. On Tuesday, the Supreme Court vacated Justice Ndungu's stay orders and upheld the Court of Appeals' decision, declaring that Deputy Chief Justice Kalpana Rawal and, uh, and Justice uh, Philip Tunoy uh, should retire after they had attained the age of 70. Lawyers representing Rawal and Tunoy immediately asked for a 21-day stay orders of the Supreme Court's decision to enable the aggrieved judges to decide their next course of action. Here is Judge Willy Mutunga's ruling. We education for the stay of the ruling and orders of the court for a period of 21 days to consult uh, their client on the, on the way forward. The application was supported by counsel, Mr. Waweru Gatonye, counsel for the Honorable uh, DCJ, the Justice Rawal. He submitted that if stay was not granted and an appeal was successful, to be rendered negatory. Mr. Gatoni submitted that within the 21-day period, we would also consider an application for a review of the ruling within the legally provided 14 days. Senior counsels Muita and Hamed Nasir contending that if the appeal was successful, then no irre irreparable loss will be occasioned as damages will be a sufficient remedy. Senior counsel Ahmed Nasir queried what was being stayed. He contended that the expert orders have been, having been vacated, there was nothing left for the court to stay. He submitted that the court cannot give any order, and the application was frivolous and vexatious. Citizen Omutata, the interested party in the matter, joined in opposing the application submitting that the matter was now res judicata and secondly that the court had no jurisdiction to grant a stay if there was no quorum some judges having already recused themselves in the reply Zanroji urged the court to apply the any reinforced principles which were restated in the case of BAT against the rent restriction tribunal um, and they find that you can still stay its decision. Now, this court would like to outright, outrightly state that having delivered its ruling in the matter in the manner it did, the court is constrained to determine the application for stay on its merit. Firstly, the court observes that upon the delivery of its decision, culminating in the orders vacating the expert orders, it became functus official. Secondly, three judges of this bench having recused and or disqualified themselves from further hearing, uh, further hearing this matter, there was no competent court before which the application could be properly made. The matter ends there. Well, that was uh, Chief Justice William Mutunga earlier on in the day giving his ruling, uh, his last and uh, final ruling as a Chief Justice and President of the uh, Supreme Court. And our reporter, Mirimi Mwangi, was in court in the morning as well following up the proceedings. Let's now join him live uh, to get updates on what really happened in court in uh, uh, the morning hours. Thank you very much for joining us on Newsdesk. Mirimi, a few hearts have been broken uh, with this ruling and and uh, given the kind of public interest uh, this uh, ruling or these proceedings had drawn, uh, just give us the highlights of what was said in court by the Chief Justice. Uh, good afternoon, Akisa. Now, the upshot of that verdict that was delivered by Chief Justice Willy Mutunga on behalf of what should have been the five uh, judge bench is, of course, that Deputy Chief Justice Kalpanarawal, uh, age 70 now, 
and suspended Supreme Court Judge Philip Tunoy, age 72, have to go on immediate retirement. Uh, it is a, a ruling that, of course, uh, puts a major roadblock on any possible uh, appeal against the verdict of the Supreme Court on Tuesday, where three judges uh, out of the five judge bench recused themselves from hearing that dispute. And even today, uh, the statement of the Chief Justice was that uh, with the exit of the three judges, then the Supreme Court was Thank not uh, properly constituted to entertain that application where uh, Deputy Chief Justice Kalpana Rawal and uh, Justice Tunoy were trying to get a lifeline, arguably, upon which they would uh, reintroduce their appeal against the Court of Appeal decision where uh, the court or the seventh judge bench of the Court of Appeal affirmed that the retirement age for judges is 70 years and therefore, technically speaking, they have to go on retirement. Remember, the Judicial Service Commission has this morning advertised uh, for the uh, replacements for the position of Chief Justice William Mutunga, who exits the judiciary today, he goes on retirement today, as well as the position for Deputy Chief Justice Kalpana Rawal and Justice Tunoy. And immediately after uh, Mutunga finished giving the verdict today, I remember there were three judges, ought to be five judges, but only three judges. Interestingly, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Verdict on Tuesday that appeared in court today. And as soon as the chief justice was done with the verdict, uh, lawyer Firoz Norji, who is representing Justice uh, Tunoy, attempted to make yet another objection against the termination of that case at this uh, stage. And his argument was that JSC has advertised the positions when technically Rawal and Tunoy had some lifeline awaiting them in court, hopefully today with the ruling that was to be given today. But interestingly, the Chief Justice and the other two judges that were on the bench just walked away and uh, Firoz kept talking even as the judges walked out of the chambers and walked out of the courtroom. So quite yes. an interesting day, but of course one which marks the uh, end of the judicial careers of uh, Rawal, who has been here for 40 years, and Tunoy, who has worked in the judiciary for up to 30 years, Akisa. Now, Murimi, quickly, given how much uh, Justice, uh, Deputy Chief Justice uh, Kalpana Rawal and uh, suspended judge Justice Philip Tunoy have fought to remain in office, uh, um, what would be next for them? Have we gotten any reaction from them or their lawyers? Now, interestingly, uh, Akisa, it has been a, a, a protracted court battle of up to two years now. And what has been the argument of Rawal, even at one point where she said that she's, she can leave or vacate office by the 31st of December this year, her insistence was that her pensions have to be calculated up to the, uh, to the age of 74 years. And that's what she has been fighting for, uh, insisting that she can retire but has to wait until the 31st of December. For Tunoy, remember, it's about uh, a legacy and getting to clear his name from the tribunal that is investigating the Kidero bribery saga that is facing him. Technically, that tribunal might come to an end now that uh, he goes on retirement. But remember, he can still uh, argue that he wants to clear his uh, name with regard to that bribery saga. So for Rawal, it has been uh, that she has insisted she wants to remain in the judiciary up to the 31st of December this year, arguably for many uh, to, to perhaps uh, clear her workload or what she has been doing. But remember, that would cause uh, yet another technicality on their appointment of the successors of the two top officers in the judiciary, because now the JSC has the opportunity to undertake what many might say is a simultaneous uh, recruitment of the chief justice and the deputy. And many legal thinkers that I have been able to speak to in the past argue that it serves better, the country better, when they get the chief justice and the deputy chief justice at the same time in preparation for the coming elections, which are only 14 months away, Akisa. Now, Marimi, and uh, even after the ruling was made, uh, we have uh, other, an, another function, uh, so to speak, uh, happening in the Supreme Court. We were showing it live before we got to the news. Just give us an update on the kind of reports that the Chief Justice is currently receiving. 
Now, uh, Akisa, uh, given that it's now the final day for the Chief Justice here at the Supreme Court, various task forces that had been formed to, uh, you know, give directions on various issues, issuance of bond, uh, alternative uh, d dispute resolution, uh, the task forces are giving their reports just a short distance from here to the Chief Justice as he exits the judiciary. And that, of course, would be to allow the incoming Chief Justice to uh, actualize what has been uh, envisioned in those uh, various reports. My colleague, Michelle Ngele, is inside there following up uh, the issue of the, the reports that are being given out. But remember, uh, the Chief Justice is again set to uh, make, uh, you know, like the final farewell message at 3 p.m. right here at the Supreme Court, uh, arguably his uh, last in interaction with the judicial staff here at the Supreme Court Akisa. So quite a busy day for the Chief Justice, which of course began with the cutting of the cake earlier this morning. It is his birthday. Interestingly, he turns 70. The matter which has been uh, the subject of that <laughs> protracted uh, dispute that has been before court, of course, affecting his deputy and the third senior most judge of the Supreme Court, suspended judge Philip Tunoy. So quite a busy schedule for the Chief Justice on his final day in office. Akisa. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Murimi, for that update. And uh, as he says, it is quite a busy day for Chief Justice William Mutunga as he says goodbye to that seat and the people he's worked with for the past, uh, say, four or five years. And uh, his birthday, he turns 70 today, decides to retire at exactly the age of 70. All right. Thank you very much, Murimi, for that report.